Hello, I'm Ferris Pilot, and today we're going to talk about the upcoming update to Overwatch, now available in the public test region. Before we get to the newly added character Anna Amari, I briefly want to go over some of the other notable changes. First of all, competitive play now enforces a one hero limit. Spooky. It's almost like the design team is listening to the player base. There have been some much needed tweaks to the UI as well, like mouse sensitivity accurate to two decimal places, and the ability to actually type in numbers instead of having to use a slider. Really that stuff should have been in since release, but hey, better late than never. The commendation cards at the end of the game were also tweaked to show fewer trashy accomplishments like Transcendent Sealing done. This is a good change because a Roadhog with 5 gold medals has a little bit more to brag about than 48% hook accuracy. There have also been a few balance adjustments, in particular D.Va and Zenyatta were both buffed. And remember that video I made recently on how D.Va should be buffed? It was totally 100% off the mark. The Overwatch designers ignored her crit box and instead modified her barrier field to give her more durability. You now have to hold down the alt fire button to use it and to keep it activated. It uses up charge at a fixed rate whenever it's up and then slowly regenerates charge whenever it's down. There's also a 1 second cooldown so you can't just constantly switch it on and off. I think this gives D.Va a lot more flexibility with her defensive ability and certainly helps her fit into the role of tank a bit better. I do think it could use some kind of auditory or screen space visual indicator of the cooldown, just because it's so quick that glancing to the bottom right of the screen during a break in the action is not always an option. She also had her ult buffed. The charge speed is faster, it explodes faster after it's used, and more importantly, D.Va no longer takes damage from her own ultimate. This has some pretty interesting gameplay consequences, like giving her the ability to clear a point and then immediately start capturing it, even going as far as to use her own exploding mech as cover. Cool stuff. Mercy's damage boost has been buffed because people were using her pistol instead, and her ult has also been changed a little bit. It takes a bit longer to charge up, but she can move during it, and it resets Guardian Angel's cooldown. This allows for the cheeky play of flying in, popping a res, and then flying back out. Expect to see that one a few times. Zinyad is the other big buff though, and with his lack of mobility and low HP, he was always a little bit too easy to kill. Plus his ult sort of felt like a crappy version of Lucio's. But not anymore. Zenyatta will now sport a whopping 150 shields plus 50 HP for a grand total of 200 hit points, and his ultimate now doubles his movement speed and heals at a faster rate. I'm interested in seeing how this affects his pick rate in competitive matches. He's certainly not enough as a solo support, but he may be viable as a secondary, especially due to the popularity of Roadhog, who eats it hard from Zenyatta's Discord Orb. One last thing before we talk about Anna, McCree's damage falloff was adjusted to be closer to that of Soldier 76. Farah is pretty strong right now, so this might actually make McCree a little bit more popular, especially since the one hero limit also means that people can't just double up on Soldier if Farah is tearing them apart. And last but not least, it's Anna, a whole new character and a support at that. In case you don't know, Anna is actually Farah's mom, who everybody thought was dead, but she's not really dead, because in Overwatch, Heroes never die! Her primary fire is a gun that shoots darts, which heal allies and damage enemies over time. The damage over time is very quick, but not instant, so I thought I'd mention it. She can also scope in and do the same thing, except that using the scope also makes her weapon hit scan for some reason. Strangely for a sniper, Anna can't do additional headshot damage, so you're better off aiming for meat shots all the time. One of her abilities is a sleeping dart, which, like the name suggests, puts enemies to sleep. This is similar to a freeze or a stun, except that sleeping characters immediately wake up when they get hit. It seems like a good way to escape from close range encounters, and also a way to shut down or limit the effectiveness of enemy ultimates. If you never take damage, sleeping lasts for a pretty long time, and I could see it used deliberately to shut down an enemy for a while, but that would require a lot of coordination from the team. Anna's other ability is a biotic grenade, which heals allies in its range and makes them receive more healing from all sources. But wait, there's more! It damages enemies in its range and stops them from being healed. This is clearly good when used with or against other healers, but remember, it says all sources, health packs and self heals included. Plus, this can be used by Anna to heal herself by tossing it at the ground. Unlike the other supports, Anna doesn't have any form of health regeneration, so this ability seems crucial for survival. The range is decent and it's incredibly easy to find a way to use it. One downside is that it doesn't appear to work on shields. I tested using it to stop Zarya's regen and it did no such thing. Anna's ultimate uses nanomachines to boost the damage, speed, and damage resistance of a single ally. There's the possibility for some strong combinations there. We've all seen power walking McCree. Now imagine if he took less damage. Think about an ulting Genji that can one-shot all squishies with Dragon Blade and is way harder to kill or escape from. Most tanks suffer from being slow, but with this ultimate they turn into death machines. 
Overall, Anna seems weak at close range and against mobile heroes because of her own lack of mobility and low DPS. Her healing abilities are also not enough to be a solo healer. Her real strength, it seems, is in helping her team be more effective while also providing some mid to long range damage. I'm hesitant to make sweeping declarations about her usefulness just yet as I've only played her a bit, but I think that as she sees more play, things will become more apparent about where she fits into the team. I will say that with the recent buff to Zenyatta, having the two work together might be enough to replace a Mercy or Lucio on heals. It's certainly a win for casual players who just want to have fun and may not enjoy the gameplay of pure support. But that's all for today, folks. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!